Bruce Spence from the Dynamic Universe and Digital Art Live. Apologizing for the stream because we're streaming real early in the morning. This is really for my YouTube channel. And uh, it's just, I'm going to do my wax poetic on a couple of ideas. This is the context of art and the CGI medium. And the reason we're talking about this is because I see a lot of talk about uh, computer graphics and art, doing CGI, doing modeling, working in something like I do, like Daz Studio or Poser. Uh, we're talking about CGI art, hashtag render art, and where it brushes and borders against additional art mediums and the artist and the value of art. And we sort of break down to some of the concepts that I teach in my class that we explore art from the perspective of context matters. And what that means is in traditional forms of anything, uh, let's say you play rock music and that's what you specialize in. That's what you play, that's what you perform, that's what you're a lover of. If that's what your genre or lane is, you don't seek validation from someone who plays jazz music. You don't turn to them and say, please evaluate my art and give me perspective on whether this is art or what kind of art lane does it fit in. You don't do that because we kind of understand there are different disciplines, different genres. And we talk about that in context of even different mediums. You don't ask the guitarist to become your singing coach. You can ask their opinion. And when you seek the opinion of the guitarist, you're basically saying it in context of a listener. You're saying as someone who enjoys music, what do you think overall? But really, it would be among the vocalists to talk about how good the vocals are. The same thing in genres, the same thing in CGI, the same thing in mediums. If you do oil paints, you don't turn to the watercolor artist and say, please evaluate and validate my work because, well, you're some kind of artist, even though you really don't use my medium. And the reason this brushes against the three things that validate artwork or work, period. And I've talked about this in my class. I'm going to repeat it here briefly. Is that it takes three things to validate your art, your creative work, whatever it is. And the first is your peers. And the reason peers matter, and when I say peers, I mean people that do the same thing you're doing people that know how you work, what your tools are, what your tools do, how well you're manipulating your skill set when it comes to making your art, right? So if you're a guitarist, other guitarists know what you do when you play the guitar. The same thing with CGI and anything else that does with modeling is that people that actually do it know how well you're applying your skill set to achieve whatever work you're ending up with. They know. That's why we talk about peers. If you do not do CGI art or render art, you're not a peer of those that do. If you traditionally draw, paint, whatever it is, sculpt, if you're not doing it in CGI, you're not a peer of those that do. You become the audience, someone who has to make a decision on whether or not you like the art. And you're not a peer of them. But you see people cross disciplines and they attempt to talk like a peer. As if a person who does photography is going to speak on the same level as someone who does sculpture. And they're going to give you their opinion of your sculpting work, although they have no familiarity with the medium. Or the process that it takes to create your sculpture, a photographer wants to weigh in. And it's the same thing in the terms of CGI. For those that do not do CGI, don't work the medium or do render art of their own, you're not a peer of those that create in that context. The same thing goes for drawing and artists who do CGI stuff and rendering and converting and using filters. You're not their peer. Well, why is this important? Because we talked about critics before. Critics bring context to your work. Critics have a vast knowledge of the medium. They know what was done in the past. They have an eye on what's going on today. 
and they have a projection for the future. Why is that important? Because the critics give context to your to your work. They know where it fits in the slot of all the other works in that medium. If you're going to do a remake of a movie, the critic needs to have seen the first one. If you're going to do a movie version of the book, the critic needs to have read the book. That's wholly different from the third validator, which is the general target audience. That is the like or dislike, the subjective part. And many people like to hide behind the subjective and say, oh, all art is subjective. So whatever you say, whatever your opinion is, is valid. It goes among the three. And many things that are okay tap two of the three. Critics like it. Uh, people who also work in that medium respect it, but the audience panned it. Or the audience loves it, but critics have blasted it, and people inside the circle think it's hacky work. So in, in, in this context, we sort of talk about those pieces all fit in. It takes all three to achieve a masterwork. So it really doesn't make sense to compare different mediums or even give an opinion anything over the level of like or dislike. And it fits in the mold as if I don't like rock music, my opinion on rock music is really not that heavy because I just don't like the genre, period. So why would you turn to people who don't like the genre and try to get them to evaluate a piece that sits inside of that? So in terms of CGI and 3D, because, you know, I do a lot of CGI stuff, my comics, you're looking at a scene from it now that I've got up on the screen. If you don't do 3D work, if you don't use the tools that I do, you're not speaking to me as a peer. You're speaking to me as a general target audience. And if you don't like CGI or you don't like 3D work or you don't like render art, you're not counted among the target audience. You're a visitor. Whether it be anything, if you're a photographer, you know photography. It doesn't make sense for someone who doesn't do photography to tell you that you captured the cheetah running along in perfect focus, but the background is blurry, therefore it's a horrible picture. Because they don't have experience in the actual medium to critique your work in any sense that really has value besides like and dislike. And where it gets a little gray is when we talk about the difference between sculpting and rendering art. Where many people feel like there's some desire to do all the 3D modeling yourself. It's 3D art or render art. It is not 3D sculpting. And for those that sort of don't understand the difference, we'll break it back down to music. Electronic music is given the name electronic because it means music aided by electronic devices. You understand the difference between an acoustic guitar and an electric guitar. That electric guitar is powered by electronics. So you can understand it in that medium. So we apply that to art. Digital painting is painting with the aid of digital devices, i.e. your computer. We understand that. ZBrush is a wonderful tool along with all the other ones, but using ZBrush isn't sculpting. It is digital sculpting. They're different disciplines requiring a different skill set. Electronic music builds itself on the amount of te technical prowess it takes to generate that kind of music. The skill it takes to learn electronic equipment to manage those tools. That's why that technical part of the complexity of the tool set, not just the instrument, but the tool set itself, is where the, the extra craft level is considered. The extra tech skill. Digital painting, the same thing. CGI work, the same thing. It's an implied uh, understanding of the tech tools involved. The digital medium. That's where it shines, and that's where a huge amount of the credit comes from. And if you're not aware of how the tools work, what it takes to craft in that medium, where do we understand the, and draw the line of what becomes art, what becomes skillful, what becomes the craft, 
what becomes a masterpiece. Those that enjoy the craft, those that enjoy the medium, those who like watercolor paintings, those who like the genre of music are the audience. If you don't like the medium, you're not the judge of it. You're not the peer. I know you're, you feel like you're, your opinion weighs more because you're an artist in a different field, but you don't have people who enjoy boxing, watch boxing and judge boxing. You don't bring them into a karate tournament and use their opinion to figure out who performed best in the karate tournament. You understand it's a different, it's a different skill set. It's a different experience base. You're not even the target crowd for that type of action. And we seem to understand that in all these other facets of art. But it seems that when it comes to some of the CGI and 3D stuff, we suddenly forget that we're talking about a different discipline. We're talking about a different medium, and it's not the same thing. But because you have a high regard for your opinion and a skill set in a certain medium, you believe it translates to all the others. Because you know a lot about sculpting, it somehow means that you also must have a keen opinion about music. Even though you don't make any, even though you don't create, even though you might not even have a large collection of eclectic music, even though you haven't studied the genre from the beginning to, to the now and have an understanding of its history, you still feel somehow that your opinion holds all of this weight. And it's an uncanny thing that seems to occur. And it rushes mostly heavy in the realms of arts where I see it usually the most because the other genres tend not to mix. Like you don't find yourself accidentally hearing a full rock song and being, and being driven to give your opinion of it. If you don't like rock, you didn't listen to the song because it usually takes a certain amount of time to absorb it. But it seems that like when it comes to art, a quick glance at something tells you all you need to know. And somehow because you can see it, in full view, in a matter of seconds, you somehow feel you absorbed it and you you understand everything that went into making it because you just looked at it. And it's an interesting thing that seems to happen. Uh, when I talk to my classes, I've explained this concept before about being an artist, uh, the differences in the different mediums, but I do find it so a message worth repeating because so many people seem to not understand some of the bare fundamentals of what it is to be an artist using different disciplines. Uh, back to ZBrush to close out. ZBrush is a digital sculpting tool that many people use, and it's considered one of the high-end products, both for its cost and also its abilities and what it can do. But what you find in ZBrush is a lot of artists will show you a bust of a character that looks really realistic. I mean, it looks like the person they're modeling. And there's a crafting skill in that of achieving a character that looks like the person you're modeling. And it's a beautiful thing to see, and it looks looks awesome. But from an artistic perspective, you're showing off a technical skill. And it's not as if a picture of a famous actor against a black background is something that a photographer couldn't do in two seconds. You know, sit a person in a studio, throw a three-point light system on it, and then take a picture of them versus a, a back or white background. And that's what a lot of those artists are sharing, showing off their work. And what we're celebrating is their skill, their attention to detail. And if you don't use ZBrush, you might not be able to appreciate what they've achieved with that. You might just say, okay, it's a picture of, of, of X actor, so what? And that's where I'm saying that the three C's are important. What is everyone else doing? What's going on right now? What's been done in the past? Is this person pushing it to the future? That's a critic. A peer, I also use the same tools, and therefore I am the most qualified to judge it as a peer because I do the same thing they do. Therefore, I can speak on the level of a peer. If you haven't done render art, you're not a peer of those who do. If you don't have a collection, you're not an artist in that genre. You're just not. And again, if you don't enjoy that kind of art or in that medium, you're not the target audience. So when you're injecting your opinion or giving your, your, your thoughts on something, just be mindful of what perspective you're coming from. 
Unless you do it yourself, you're not a peer. Unless you have knowledge of where it's been, where it's going, and where it's at right now, you're not a critic. If you don't enjoy it, you're not the audience. I don't know how many more ways I got to say it. I think that's enough. I think I've made my case. Uh, These are some of the concepts that I talk about when it comes to art. I am Drew Spence from the Dynamic Universe and Digital Art Live. You can find my tutorials, webinars on the Daz store. Everyone pretty much knows that. You should find this on the Dynamic Music channel. There'll be a special thing for my Twitch stream. Uh, I'm sure I'm going to put links inside the description. That's pretty much it. I usually go live on weekends when I can uh, fit it in. That's about it. Drew Spence, The Dynamic Universe. I'll talk to you guys later.